Hey everyone, here it is. Not just filling rubber door seals, but sound deadening your cab. Check it out. So, ultimately, this makes a hell of a difference. I'm really quite impressed with the change that has taken shape to the inside of the cab especially when driving not just when you're slamming the doors but when you're driving as well it makes a really big difference these little rubber door seals with the sticky back adhesive are dead easy to fit and it's not expensive to buy this stuff i can't remember exactly how much i paid for it now I think in the region of about sort of 20 quid or something along those lines. Even then I feel slightly ripped off. Key thing here is to make sure that you clean and degrease all of your surfaces before you fit it. And the other thing to watch out for is see exactly how I've fitted this, the location of where I've fitted this around the door sill. Because um, it's quite important that the uh, the rubber sits in the appropriate place. But this helps stop wind noise. It helps reduce road noise and rattle. And also, don't stretch it, whatever you do. Just fit it nicely, carefully in place. Don't pull on it. Gently just lay it down and poke it in place. You beauty, look at that. Feels like a Rolls Royce in the cab now. This bit here, fitting the dodo matting or whatever sound deadening matting you've decided to purchase, getting those door cards off and all that kind of stuff is a little bit more tedious, but it's still well worth it. You definitely get scraped up. I'll show you my hands later. Anyway, these little bolts here, they're not actual bolts, they're just um, little sort of tabs that you have to align. So when they're aligned, that means that the bottom of the door uh, card can be pulled away from its location. So there's two of those to do, and then there's one uh, little uh, T25 Torx bolt in the middle. And then at the top, uh, underneath the door handle, which you need to remove with the plastic trim tool, are uh, two T30 um, screws, so uh, you'll need to pop those bad boys out. There they are, nice little silver dudes. And uh, yeah, it's all, always a little bit sort of um, uh, a troubling when you're getting these little plastic pry tools and pulling things apart like that. Always, uh, I, I never really like doing it, but th apparently everything's fine and, and it's perfectly normal. So go on, get in there. Don't be shy. Um, you literally, you do. You actually have to put quite a bit of force on the door card in order to, to, to break it free. I want to break free. But once it's free, the bottom of the door card sort of swings backwards and forwards. And then what you've got to do is uh, you've got to sort of like angle that towards you and lift the whole door card up. I'll show you that bit in a second. But uh, obviously there's uh, electrical switches, um, electrical contacts, sorry, which uh, connect to the window. Uh, switch there. So go ahead and disconnect those. They're little uh, pull tabs. They're dead easy. Just little little uh, press release latches on those. Once you've got the door card off, this is the fiddly bit. It's not too difficult, but um, there's a little release uh, mechanism which allows you to uh, release the door handle uh, mechanism, which is a bit like a bike cable. But anyway, that's uh, dead easy. Once you've done it once, you'll figure that out. It's uh, a little tiny release switch there. Now those, um, those door poppers um, have a tendency to stay in some instances and don't pop out properly. Uh, so again, get another little pry bar and um, replace those, uh, pop them off and then stick them back in your door so that when you refit your door, everything goes in place properly and everything lines up well.
So the next part of this mission, uh, well, here then is the uh, window assembly. Uh, here's the speaker assembly. Uh, the next part of this mission is to go ahead and remove this inner door card, um, which, uh, which is a little bit interesting because the entire electric window assembly is connected to it. And what I chose to do, rightly or wrongly, was just release it and drop it down ever so slightly and it will stay there in place on its own. Make sure the window's up when you're doing this, by the way. And then what I chose to do was go ahead and start fitting the matting down inside there. I could just about get my little child hands in there. Um, and then, uh, ultimately, what I decided to do, once I've got a bit of matting in there, was find a different way of sticking that matting down properly. Because, um, as you can see, you get it in there and it's just not very well stuck down with your hands because you just can't get your hands in there properly. So I found a little bit of wood, a little bit of spare wood out in the garage, which I'll burn on the barbecue a little bit later, uh, start, start the coals and uh, enjoy a, a pint and a barbie. Um, but anyway, get, get in there and make sure this matting is properly seated. Then what I chose to do was lift that inner door card up put it in place with one screw just the one screw and that gave me the ability then to lie down on the floor kneel down whatever and get more matting in behind that assembly and that was a little bit easier and i was actually quite happy that i was able to do that but as you can tell i'm not joking it really does hurt your hands so um you know, you're, 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 you're getting your hands in tiny spaces. Maybe get your wife to help you if she's got small hands. My wife's got small hands. You can tell now uh, that, the, uh, that the matting's in place. And the other thing I decided I wanted to do was go ahead and fit a little bit of uh, extra insulation. And then once everything's done, get the door card back on, get everything reverse assembled, bang it, nice and firmly in place. Ta-da! Hey up guys, it's time to put a bra on my honey. This also helps reduce a certain amount of noise, but actually stops dings and stuff like that from hitting it. So a little bit of added extra protection and a big thank to Louis Von John for sending this over. Sorry it's taken me a while to make this video, mate. Right, first things first, let's get and wash the bonnet or the hood, whether you're American or English, I don't know. And, uh, and then we can find a way to tie this on. I think it just sort of ties on with these little tie straps. I'm not sure, let's find out. So in preparation to fit this, we should go ahead and wash and clean and make sure that everything is in good shape. The last thing you want is for the wind to be bouncing around on this uh, leatherette bonnet and uh, for uh, bits to, to be uh, trapped inside scratching. Okay, it's all nice and dry now. So uh, let's lift the hood bonnet. All right, so there's some pointy corners to this and then uh, a rather round bit in the front. So clearly the pointy corners have got to go with the uh, pointy corners of the bonnet. Fitting the bra isn't that much of a hardship. Obviously make sure that you've uh, got your bonnet on the latch so that you can lift it up and pull it over. Paracord time. So uh, what we've got to do now is just create some lacing to pull all of those uh, little orange handles together inside the bonnet. Paracord. And what I did is um, I started the string on one of those latches, paracord on one of those latches, and started sort of like uh, uh, threading it through like it's a shoelace, and ultimately um, ended up, uh, ended up in, in such a position where the string didn't interfere with the latch, the bonnet latch, or the hood latch, uh, or anything else. And actually, it all worked out quite well, and I was reasonably impressed. So there she is. Time to give her another little bit of a clean up. And as soon as we've got that all cleaned up, perhaps we can go for a test drive and enjoy the fruits of our labors. Uh, prior to that, though, um, I think that can wait till tomorrow. 
because uh, I think it's time for a beer and a barbecue. Ladies and gents, thanks ever so much for watching. As always, really appreciate a good old thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. Go ahead and hit that bell button and all that kind of madness. And um, we look forward to seeing you on the next one. If you haven't seen some of our other videos, go check them out. They can be quite interesting, mildly educational, and a little bit fun. Take care, people. Stay safe and have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Cheers and beers. Bye for now.